Greetings everyone, this is Rambling Collector here, and welcome back to another book review video. So for the subject of this one, we will be once more diving into the world of Warhammer 40,000, with one of the newest books to have hit the shelves from Black Library. We are going to be talking about The Lion, Son of the Forest by Mike Brooks. And when I say one of the most recent books to have dropped from the Black Library, I mean it. This novel was actually released during the time of the Arcs of Omen campaign that was going on for Warhammer 40,000, back when they were transitioning from 9th edition to 10th edition. And as such, it culminated in the return of another loyalist Primarch, that being Lion L. Johnson, the Primarch of the Dark Angels Space Marine Legion. And this is his story of how he returned to the main setting. But, with all that being said, let's get started about the overall facts and thoughts for this book. So firstly, I want to say this much. I did not know much about Lionel Johnson except through lore videos that I have watched countless times about the Dark Angels and about Lionel Johnson himself. But I have never really read a story from his point of view until this novel. But I will say that this provides a great character review of Lionel Johnson himself, both his past and his future, as well as his interactions with his fallen sons. See, the highlight of the story is his quest for redemption. When we start off with the story, Lionel Johnson does not remember anything about who he is, where he has come from. All he has is flashes of memories as he's wandering through a pocket dimension forest that he himself has created. But it is also designed as a way to protect himself from the influence of the Chaos Gods, because up until now, Lionel Johnson has been asleep beneath the rock, the main fortress and capital ship of the Dark Angels Space Marine chapter for thousands of years, and has only just recently been woken up. So, we have the lion running around, no memories, wandering through a forest trying to figure out who he is. But, over the course of finding one of his fallen Dark Angel sons, he regains his memories of who he is, and we see his quest of just wanting to figure out what exactly has happened to the Imperium of Man that he had once helped to create, and now he feels that he must protect the shattered remnants of, at least that he is aware of. Believing himself to be the only surviving Primarch, believing that all of his other brothers are dead or long gone. And it's honestly a bitter note for him, especially when he comes to find out during one of the moments when he is fighting against a Chaos Space Marine, he comes to find out that he is very heavily aged from the man that he once was. And to be quite honest with you, it's a humbling thing for the Lion to have to realize that in his advanced age, while he's still very strong considering that he is a Primarch, it's a humbling thing for him to see that old age is actually catching up to him a little bit. But more than that, though, this was a great character study of the fallen Dark Angels, which we hear a lot about in Dark Angel stories about how the fallen are these evil space marines who fell to chaos. But this novel really provides a look at how most of them were not even affected by chaos. A lot of them were simply led in the wrong direction. They either hated the Lion, or loved the Imperium, or various other notes in between. Or they were completely loyal and just did not know what was going on, due to Caliban being cut off from the rest of the galaxy during the time of the Horus Heresy. But, one of the best characters I would say that I saw here as another point of view character besides the Lion was Zabriel, another fallen Dark Angel. His character was amazing to see because he was willing to banter with the Lion to kind of tell him what had gone wrong between the Legion and everything else that had happened when the Lion, in that moment, had practically abandoned Caliban. It was a humbling thing for the Lion to have to understand that his actions had major consequences, especially his keeping of secrets. The miscommunications, the constant flashing of badges, the constant hidden hush-hush conversations really backfired on the Dark Angels in such a horrendous way, resulting in a good chunk of their legion being sent into the warp and the destruction of their home world. The Lion has to come to terms with this and understand 
that his actions had far-reaching consequences. But the fallen dark angels, I love how they are such a mix and match collection. You have some that have either fully embraced chaos, which we do see a prime example of throughout the novel, or we have some who are simply just wanting to be left alone or protecting pockets of the Imperium so long as they are kept safe. And honestly, I thought this was a very interesting piece, especially because up until now, my only experience with the Dark Angels actually came from Luther, First of the Fallen, another character novel, and that was interesting to see. But more than that, the lion's final fight with the protector of the Emperor's shield, that had me hooked from start to finish. Because throughout this novel, we see him gathering up more of his fallen sons, recruiting them to his banner with the offer of redemption and proving that the lion himself is a changed man from whom he was during the time of the Horus heresy. It was so fascinating to see him actually interacting with his sons, proving to them that he himself had changed, that he had grown wiser, more cautious, less likely to keep secrets like he was in his youth. But this moment, when he is fighting for his life against his other Primarch brothers, or at least what is a shadow of them, the protector of the Emperor's personal shield. I have to say, that moment when he is fighting all of them, it had me hooked, watching him interact with the various loyalist and traitor brothers of his, seeing his conversations with them, especially with Conrad Kurz, Horus, and so many others, even Perturabo, though Perturabo really got the short end of the stick when Lionel Johnson looks at him and he says, at least you could have taken the face of a brother I actually liked. Like, that is such a burn on Perturabo in all sense of the word. But more than that, the moment when he reclaims, or at least claims, that shield for the Emperor, it was amazing. Seeing him gain a new sword, a ranged weapon fit for him, and even now, the Emperor's personal shield was an amazing part of the story. I loved that from start to finish, and you know what? I think let's move on to random thoughts here. I want to give more on this, if I may, outside of the book. So random thoughts here. This personally highlighted one of the main things that I really love when it comes to 40k or Warhammer novels in general. The moment when it is a character focused story, when it takes a backseat from the major galaxy hopping fighting and everything else, reclaiming of worlds, all of that, and it takes a step back to focus on one singular character. You really learn to get inside of their heads. You see their thought processes. And in some cases, you feel as though you are the character, seeing the world through their eyes. And it is such a fascinating thing to behold. This is the reason why I love focused novels such as Sigismund, Eternal Crusader, Lion, Son of the Forest, and Luther, First of the Fallen. Especially with Luther, First of the Fallen, that really showed how the fallen dark angels really came to be during the time of the Horus Heresy. And Lion, Son of the Forest, answers some of those questions and responds to it in a way. It's a fun way for you to really be interested in picking up Luther, as well as this novel in general, to see how things started with Luther and how the lion is going to try and put an end to all of it. But once again, some other great character pieces that I have read from the Warhammer series and franchise have been works such as the Night Lords or Ademon Exile, the Black Legion books, all of which were fantastic and very well written. And this is the reason why I love character focused novels in general, because you really get to learn and be that character. I know I'm possibly rambling here, but <laughs> I mean, it is in the title here. It is in the name of the channel. But more than that, this actually inspires me to want to pick up another set of Primarch novels. Not so much the main ones of the Horus Heresy, but rather one that has already been published and been out for a while. That being Dark Imperium. But I want to save that as a major video where I cover all three of the books. Or perhaps I will split them into three separate videos, the way I can really focus on each novel. 
That depends on what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts on that. Should I record Dark Imperium as one massive video covering all three books of the trilogy? Or should I do three separate videos focusing on each novel individually? And the reason why I want to pick up the Dark Imperium trilogy now is because there is another Primarch who is the main focus within that trilogy, that being Rubute Gilliman, Primarch of the Ultramarines, and the one who really has to carry the burden of rebuilding the Imperium, which is why seeing the final pages of when Lionel Johnson learned that he was not the only Primarch in the galaxy, when he learned that even Rubute Gilliman was still alive and kicking, his final words on the page of the book being, I am no longer alone. That really hits you when you see that these Primarchs, they are going to band together hard. Because in the end of the day, their father's a corpse on a throne. Most of their brothers are either dead or traitors. So the ones who are left living and loyalist, they are going to hold on to each other as tightly as they can. Because at that moment, they are all they have in that very moment. And I honestly cannot wait to see the reunion between Gilliman and the Lion. I desperately hope that we get to see a full novel or even short story on that. But with that being said, let's move on to the final overall score. Though if you all have been hearing the heaping praise that I have been tossing onto this book, I think you all will have a very accurate guess as to what I'm going to give this novel. And if you guessed correctly, yes. The Lion, Son of the Forest by Mike Brooks gets a solid 10 out of 10 in my book for great action moments, great characterization of the lion, as well as the fallen dark angels that we meet throughout this novel. And overall, just being a great way to remind me of some of the best of Warhammer books, the best that they have to offer when you can just take a back seat from the major series and really just stop and analyze a single character. And once again, this will actually inspire me after reading the Lion novel to really dive into the Dark Imperium. And I think you all will see that in a future review sometime. But if you are curious to see some of the other Warhammer 40,000 books that I have covered on this channel, please feel free to click a link to that playlist that you will see at the end of this video. It is all of my Warhammer 40k rambles that I have done so far. Or if you are interested in seeing some of the other books that are non Warhammer related that I've covered on this channel, I will leave a link to that playlist as well. And once again, you guys, thank you so much for listening. If you've stuck around to the end of this video, it really means a lot to me that you all have given your love and support to listen to a crazy man rambling about one of the things that he loves, that being literature. And if you enjoy what I do here, please feel free to leave a like, comment your thoughts on this video down below, or subscribe if you're interested for more reviews or what I will have to say in the future. I guarantee you, you will not be bored on this channel. And once again, thank you all for giving me a chance, and I will see you all in the next video. This is Rambling Collector, signing off for now. Have a great day, fellow readers, and I will see you all in the next video.